Hello, and welcome back to Coin Lady Channel. I'll be telling you two tales. This is the first thing you've given me today. Surge defeats Ripple in resounding victory. Well, I'm not a fan of it. In addition, Crypto Basic X SEC chair headlines have hinted at capital raising, and Ripple XRP sales pundits have pointed fingers at Ethereum. The company. Former SEC chair Jay Clayton, that jackass, was put on the spot and now they're talking about it. Against his final day in office, he launched a powerful assault against XRP and its investors, so naturally, you're expecting a clear response or admission of guilt. If you think he'll admit, yeah, I was mistaken about that as a poor decision, you'd be surprised. Not at all, I was a jerk. Things didn't go according to plan, but at least he was questioned about it. The SEC is doing quite well. And it was Jay Clayton who made it happen, without his blessing, the case never would have gone forward, he voted in favor of it by a margin of 3 to 2. Additionally, I include the thoughts of two XRP community lawyers, Bill Morgan and Jeremy Hogan, into my analysis. Once again, we get the headline, SEC, defeats Ripple, by a significant margin. Magistrate Judge Sarah Netburn granted the SEC's motion to compel, requiring Ripple to produce comprehensive financial statements for 2022 through 2023 post-complaint contracts and answer an interrogatory regarding the proceeds from institutional XRP sales after the complaint was filed. This is a significant ruling in the ongoing case between the SEC and Ripple Labs. I understand. This is the goal that the SEC was aiming toward, and I made a film about it a day or two ago. This wasn't part of the first complaint, and it seems quite disgusting to me. The SEC is not revising its complaint since these are not the transactions that it specified and dated. Nothing has changed in that regard. Truthfully, however, I get the impression that the SEC is only attempting to annoy you to no end. Because they are awful, awful people, it's not surprising that it's beautiful. So obvious, it's utterly ridiculous. But they came up short, and now they're bitter over it. Well, duh. They're demanding, immature kids. Unfortunately, they chose to oppose historical events. And the thing is, we were really hoping that justice would be served, it has been, and now they're acting out of character. Peace remains, however. The defense team for Ripples argued that the SEC's demands for discovery after the lawsuit were both timely and preempted by a June 2021 court order. The prior refusal, however, was contextual, related to expert merits discovery, and not controlling in the present case, as Judge Netbrain made clear. The court has mandated that Ripple provide its financial accounts for the years 2022 to 2023. The SEC maintains that these documents are necessary for finding the right remedy, while Ripple maintains that its financial situation is irrelevant and secret. The court has determined that this evidence may be useful in determining a remedy. Since the SEC thinks these records might be critical in evaluating the need and rationale of an injunction, the issue escalated to whether Ripple's post-complaint contracts should be revealed. Along with the SEC's position, Judge Net Byrne has ordered the release of these contracts because they may show whether or not Ripple's post-complaint actions have complied with court judgments, which might affect the issuance of an injunction. A new interrogatory on the revenues from XRP institutional sales following the first complaint has been required to be answered by Ripple as part of the SEC's victory. This interrogatory might impact the assessment of any discouragement. Despite Ripple's objections, the court ruled that the SEC had shown their case that the requested material may be useful in developing a suitable remedy. So, guys, this is happening, despite the SEC's best efforts to avoid it. I fail to see how this will provide them with any genuine and significant benefit. Because in the end, it doesn't matter what they do, XRP is still in the clear, and they lost the case's most important battle. I just did not act in an honest manner. I see your point, the court did permit this, but who would have thought I'd get it? Furthermore, there may be an established procedure for such a situation. However, does anybody here believe the SEC is doing honestly, is really seeking the truth, and is just doing what is right? No, I don't believe anybody thinks that. Exactly zero. 
Even the SEC doubts their expertise, according to humans. Tiny irritants, it was my prediction that Judge Torres would require discovery on the post-sale contracts, and I hear you have a post from attorney Bill Morgan. Additionally, she directed today that they be revealed, meaning the SEC only had to convince the court that it wouldn't result in an expensive mini-trial. When it comes to that, it seems to have been surpassed. So far, we'll have to wait and see whether it doesn't evolve into something that's about the same as a small trial. On the surface, however, it seems like they're only attempting to dispute about fresh topics. But it's ridiculous that they act as if they should just launch a new case if they could. Seriously, it's ridiculous. Then there's this piece written by lawyer Jeremy Hogan. His reasoning was that the action was uninteresting and didn't seem to matter to Joe Slash, therefore he refrained from offering any commentary on it. I continue to reject Jean XRP's designation of myself as Macbeth. Therefore, he is correct in thinking that this is meaningless. We got our nukes, but I'm covering it nevertheless since it's significant to XRP holders. I don't care whether this has any direct bearing on us personally, but, I feel compelled to report on it since the SEC's actions are abhorrent, and I believe the public should be aware of their persistence in this regard. Simply put, they are an abhorrent agency. Following that, here is what the Crypto Basic X SEC chair has to say about capital raising, Ethereum ICO, according to Ripple XRP sales pundits. After comments made by former SEC Chair Jay Clayton on the XRP sales of Ripple's being linked to securities transactions including capital raising, industry analysts have focused on the Ethereum ICO. These remarks were delivered by Clayton on January 26 during an interview with Henry Arslanian, co-founder of Nine Blocks Capital. The present state of crypto regulation, both internationally and domestically, as well as possible ways forward, were the main points of discussion. According to Clayton, there is no ambiguity in the US crypto regulatory landscape. He argues that crypto-focused businesses have pushed for exemptions from the securities regulations that normally control the financial industry, and that these restrictions should logically apply to the crypto scene as well. Arslanian wanted to know Clayton's thoughts on the July 13th ruling and the Ripple v. SEC case from his point of view. Thus, we begin. The XRP community was ecstatic by this verdict since it showed that XRP is not a security, which was a major point in the case. As a result, when you can, you should definitely call it a partial. From a purely technical standpoint, that is what I mean. I agree. But come on, we're being honest. As far as this case was concerned, the only hypercritical factor was XRP's legal status. That was a devastating loss for the SEC. That is why I find it offensive when anything is even vaguely described as a partial win. As a result, the SEC was utterly destroyed. Their loss was enormous. It was a day I will never forget. I swear to you. It's just breathtaking to see that July 13, indeed, the day of XRP's triumph. In any case, his reaction to our selenium remains peaceful. According to Clayton, there are two types of securities transactions recognized by the US SEC, those that include secondary trading and those that aim to raise cash, such as initial coin offerings ICOs. The head of the ex-SEC emphasized the ruling from July 13, pointing out that the court distinguished between the secondary trading transactions that were not classified as securities offers and the original XRP sales to institutions that Ripples made. Clayton highlighted an important issue while conceding the possibility of appeals for both decisions. The SEC continues to impose strict regulation on transactions that aim to solicit public money via initial coin offerings. So, there you have it, folks, he was questioned directly about this, which placed him in a difficult position, and he's just the kind of man that becomes biased when he wants what he wants. It was a devastating loss but he refuses to acknowledge that he was wrongfully implicated in history, even if he wishes he could. That piece of trash is as good as gone, son, however, he will never admit it. I don't think he feels a shred of the immense guilt that he ought to. He was obviously acting in bad faith, and the devastation he caused to so many people makes him an abhorrent human being. So many individuals. Because of that man, my financial situation has deteriorated significantly. 
Because XRP was so out of sync with the market, I'm going to guess that most of you feel the same way. It did, in fact, follow the expected pattern of movement in respect to Bitcoin, but it was tied down. It failed to reach a new record high, is that a coinkadink? It's the only top 10 coin that didn't hit a new all-time high when the market got there. Are you in agreement? Thus, this continues to repulse me. Still, it was nice to see them there for it. Wow, I didn't realize he never says anything but what he did just now. This repulsive human being deserves scorn for it, which is why I'm drawing attention to it. I am only stating that. Financial advisors aren't my specialty. Do not let anything I say influence your purchasing or selling decisions. The video ends there. Please like and subscribe my channel. See you later. Bye.